da 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 this is a review of episode one of season two of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And joining me is my best buddy, Jason. Hi, Hi Jason. Everybody. Hi. I'm having a post-show popsicle. Yeah, because you liked it so much. and Not because it left a bad taste in my mouth. And it's red because it's a it's a blood wine popsicle mm-hmm. to, to commemorate Spock being a, a, a blood wine drunk. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. First episode of season two, the broken circle. Hey, what was the the, the title mean? Um, I'm not sure what the broken circle was. That was my just out of curiosity. Why was it called the the broken circle, there, Steve? I, I I'm not sure why they called it that. Uh, but okay, so, uh, Captain Pike leaves the enterprise to go look for a defense attorney. Yeah, because for, we don't want the, for the number star one. and the lead actor <laughs> in the in, in the in the premiere episode of your fucking series, right? He has he has one scene and then he leaves. He's got other things to do. He's got to number go. <laughs> I have other things to do than be in my show, okay? Um but so number one is still in trouble after last season because they found out she lied about being genetically engineered. So she's like in Starfleet jail and Pike's like, you know, there's this one person who is a really good lawyer who can maybe get you out of this, but I need to go and find her. So he goes, takes a leave of absence to go and find her while Enterprise is in space dock getting repaired and upgraded and, and stuff. whatever and, cleaned, fumigated, yeah, inspected. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They're expanding Pike's quarters again. Yeah, um, giving him another fireplace. He's like, I, I need more. I need a bigger kitchen. <laughs> um, and so while Pike is gone, and of course, number one is that maybe he's the only reason we watch this fucking show. Is that <laughs> well, what maybe, happened, Steve? Maybe you discovered that. <laughs> Spock is in charge of the Enterprise and Spock is having some trouble because at the end of last season, he kind of like he unleashed his emotions and now he's having trouble putting his emotions back in the bottle. So he's a little, you know, temperamental right now. He's yeah. a little touchy. He's a little sensitive. Yeah. Um, doesn't so take Spock much is, to make him cry. Doesn't make take much to make him cry. So Spock is is in temporary command of the enterprise and the enterprise is in space dock. And then they get a, a distress call from Laon who also left at the end of last season to go take a little girl who had been kidnapped by the Gorn home to her kids. And they haven't heard from her since then. And all of a sudden she sends them a distress call from this planet on the edge of Klingon space that is shared between the Federation and the Klingons, where they each take turns managing it for a month. And it's like a dilithium mining facility. And that's like their governmental arrangement that they take yep. turns running the planet. So mm-hmm. um, and the Klingons are in charge of it this month. And it's really bad for Starfleet ships to go when the Klingons are in charge because the Klingons don't like that. So when Spock asks Admiral uh, April if they can take the Enterprise to go see what Laon wants, Admiral April's like, no, that'll start a war, stupid. You're not doing that. Shut up. You can't go. It's dumb. And it's only yeah. one person. And yeah. it's stupid. And you, you and can't And the needs go. of the many outweigh the needs of the few, Spock. You remember that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so so Spock says, OK, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to steal the Enterprise. Minutes. This is 10 minutes yeah. into the episode. Yeah. Spock says, we're stealing the Enterprise and we're going to go see what our friend wants and fuck Admiral April and fuck anybody who has a problem with it. So they all say, okay, let's do that. And uh, Carol Kane is there as Commander Pelia. And she's like one of the inspectors who is inspecting the Starfleet, the, the, the Enterprise engines. And she's like, I want to come along. My life is boring because I'm from a species that lives a long, long time. And my life is boring and I hate it. And I oh, want and some I adventure. Know your mom. And I know your mom. Yeah. And Spock, I know your mom. Mm-hmm. So... So Spock's like, all right, whatever. So they stage like a, a fake warp core accident to have a pretext to separate from space dock. And then they just fly away to the planet. Mm-hmm. So they find Laon and it turns out there's these people. There's a group of Klingons and humans on this planet where Laon is that are uh, Who cares? planning a that are planning a false flag attack to start the war between the Federation and the Klingons up again. They built their own ship. 
their own they built Starfleet their own, ship. They built their own Starfleet ship, and they're going to use it to attack a Klingon ship to make it look like the Federation attacked the Klingons again to start the war because they realized that when the war was going on, they made a lot more profit selling dilithium to both sides than they are making now. So they're like, hey, we like money. Let's start the war again. So, Hooray. So, I was really uh, hoping Ferengi were behind it, but nope. Yeah, that's because that's what this episode needed. Another species coming in and doing stuff. Then the nothing that we got for it, it was just like, oh, I mean, okay. look, I just I feel like, OK, well, we're not. Let me let me get through the, the plot summary. Then we can fight about the episode. Mm. Um, so 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 Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel, uh, they're the ones who find the ship being built and they get aboard the ship and they're surrounded and, by these Klingons. And in five and, minutes, in less than five minutes time, what do we establish about Dr. Mbega? Oh, the Dr. Quiet, Mbe- yeah. Peaceful, nice doctor who we all love. He served during the war, during the Klingon war, and he's still yeah. apparently dealing with some issues. He has as a PTSD. Of that. And and, and, he, and and he keeps and he keeps super soldier serum in his in his right. medical bag. And he always carries uh, with him super violence drugs. So and just so, in case he needs to so, chop yeah. Saki his way out of a problem. So Chapel and and Mbenga are brought aboard this fake Federation ship by the Klingons because they have injured people that need treated, and they don't. And the Klingons don't know that they're Starfleet, like they're in disguise. Mm, they don't know yeah. that they're Starfleet people because Starfleet people aren't supposed to be there. Well, remember, um, it's also humans and Klingons on this. It's, fake ship. it's humans and Klingons, yeah. Because the um, irony, you know, the irony that they work <laughs> together. Oh, they work together to start the war. Yeah, mm-hmm. not uh, not in peace. Yeah. Um, yeah, that so high, high, uh, high Star Trek six didn't see you standing <laughs> over there. Oh, yeah, you're oh, sad it, too. Okay. If there if if there's anything that the current generation of Star Trek needs to be a lot more like, it's Star Trek six, if you ask me. But anyway, um, but so so they're on this fake Federation ship, Starfleet ship, and they realize, okay, we need to warn the Enterprise that you know, what they're planning to do because a Klingon ship just came into to the system, and they okay, this fake Federation ship is going to attack this Klingon ship, and that's going to restart the war. So they send a secret message. Well, first of all, they take the super soldier serum and they fight their way to whatever part of the ship they need to get to to send the secret message. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they have another fight with a bunch of Klingons, and mm-hmm. then they're like tr- they they lock themselves in a room. While the fake ship has left and has gone into space and is about to attack the Klingon ship, just like in 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 Star Trek: The Rise of uh, Star Wars: The Rise of Star Skywalker. Yes, yes, just like that. And uh, so Spock is in charge of the Enterprise, and they get the secret message from the ship that Mbenga and Chapel are on, and the message is, "Hey, this ship is bad. Bad ship. Blow the ship up. Blow the ship up right now." And everyone on the ship is like, "Hey, we got to blow it up." And 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 and. and Spock is all conflicted face because the woman that he really hasn't demonstrated a whole lot of feelings for. Well, he's nuts. demonstrated some. He's demonstrated some. There was some, there was some there was a little thing between them in the last season. I mean, yeah, there was some flirtation. There was some, you know. Whatever. It's like Spock and his girlfriend in chapel were reenacting that distracted boyfriend meme. Yeah, whatever. Spock's the that- guy going like. They're hemming and when hawing, walks and, by. and he hems and haws for I don't. know, It feels like twenty minutes. Well, yeah, because he wants yeah. And then so Chapel and Mbenga are locked in the room, and the Klingons are on the other side of the door. And plus, the you know they they know that they have told Spock to blow up the ship. So they're like, "What are we gonna do?" And they find a couple of components of a spacesuit in a in a closet. And mm-hmm. and Benga's like, "I got a great idea. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna space ourselves, and we'll activate the homing beacon in the helmet." from this spacesuit and we'll be exposed to space, mm-hmm. but the enterprise will detect the, the homing signal and they'll beam us in before we die. Isn't that a great That's plan? Right. Mm-hmm. Chapel's like, sure, it's a great plan. Let's do that. So they do that. And Spock blows up the ship and then Uhura detects the homing beacon and they beam them back. And uh, Mbenga and Chapel are on the transporter pad and Spock runs in and Mbenga's like, I'm okay. And Spock's like, you're not Does even not here. give a shit. And, yeah. <laughs> and he does CPR on Chapel to bring her back. And Mbenga's like, I'm here. I'm okay. And Spock's like, whatever. And, you know, because. They blow and, up the other ship. Yeah. They blow up the fake they, ship. They, 
they blow up the fake ship and Spock convinces the commander of the Klingon ship that that's what he did, that he blew up the other ship because it was a that's conspiracy right. and he wanted. So the other Klingon was like, OK, well, I'll believe it if you get super drunk with me on blood wine. And Spock's like, you're on. Yeah. So they drink and blood wine and Spock has another wine. Spock has another chat with Carol Kane's character who's like, remember me? Yeah, from, I was in the beginning. <laughs> from an hour ago. When, mm-hmm. and, and she's like, I want to be on your ship because my boring life sucks. And Spock's like, OK, so they go back to or they're on their way no, back. Remember to Remember also and, Noon Singh, whatever her name is. Remember the the, the plot point they used to get him out oh, here to do this? Yeah, she, fucking yeah. shit. Yeah. Remember she, that? She, remember her? She, she gives the little girl back to her parents mm-hmm. and and and, and, and g- goes back to the Enterprise and, and then they go back in an April cab, uh, whatever Admiral. Admiral Admiral April is all like, well, you know what? You stole it, but you did good things and just get the Enterprise back here or whatever. Because Jesus as we Christ. know from watching Star Trek before, Starfleet doesn't care if you steal a ship as we long as it all turns out OK. Care. It's the problem with being in a society without money. Nothing you do has any value anyway. Just come <laughs> home. When you come home, just, and he's like, "Just Fine. come home." And, and they and turn then, off then, the phone. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they hang up on Spock, and they're like, Phew, "He doesn't know about the other war that we have to fight." Maybe that we're and planning it's just, right yeah. now that might happen with dun 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 the Gorn. The, the Gorn. Remember them from last season? They're still a thing. So, and that's the episode. The so. end of the episode. So you loved it. I had a, a certain expectations based yes, on last please. season, based on last season. Yes. That was not this fucking mess. <laughs> this really, on, I, Steve, based on, based on last season, what would you expect the season premiere of season two to be? It probably wouldn't have been like this. No. It probably wouldn't have been like this. It would have been, no. you know, the ship going to a planet and, you know, getting involved in some Star Trek shit. And, there's some Star Trek you know, shit, and then there's some yeah. other shit on the side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, like maybe Khan was on some other planet. They're having some sort of crisis or whatever. Right? But yes. all of this felt like the side shit from last season crowded into one episode. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, we got to uh, what's her face is off helping that kid. No, oh, she's calling us because there's a problem. And oh, look, old villains, the Klingons, and they look like Klingons again. Hooray! And they're acting like Klingons again. Hooray! This isn't retread. Anyway, uh oh, there's a plot that we stole from the undiscovered country that we need to take care of. And oh, now Mbenga, who you guys, I guess, thought was boring, is now. Filled with violence that can come out at any minute. <laughs> He's a piano wire pulled to the breaking point. Yes. I mean, literally, there were character traits that were being yoinked out of nowhere. For example, last season, no one bothered to say, oh, by the way, um, apparently Vulcans have blocks that get torn down and Spocks have been torn down. And now he's going to be a weepy blubber puss for the rest of the season because it doesn't take much for him to cry or feel something. OK, right. so Spock's not Spock. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse Chapel is so I don't know who Nurse Chapel is, but she got to the both both the medical officers got to beat up a whole bunch of Klingons, didn't they? Oh and, yes, and 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 it, and, that, and it took up a good deal of screen time. Oh yeah, and Embega yeah. got to torture a dude. He did, and kicked him in the nuts. Hey Steve, what was this episode yeah. about? Stopping a war between the Klingons Steve? and the Federation. What was this episode of Star Trek about? <laughs> Mbenga and Chapel fighting people. Hey, Steve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I normally ask you a question about what was this episode of Star Trek about, and it's a good episode, what do we discuss? Uh, oh, like, the, you know, the themes, the ideas, the, mm-hmm. the underlying message. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was there any of that in this episode? Themes, war is, ideas. War is bad. War okay. is bad. No, okay, we can throw that one away. We can throw that one away. <laughs> okay, that's fine. What were the themes and underlying messages of this episode? 
I mean, I we, can't really think of any to jump. Off. I mean, we, we got rid of Pike. He's gone within three minutes. Right? Yes. For this episode. It's not and, like he's and, exited the show. I mean, I'm I sure he'll be this, in the show a lot. I said this. Oh, I'm maybe. Um, but I said, this <laughs> in, I said this in, you're like, a, you're like a dog when their owner leaves. He's gone. He's never coming back. What's happened to Captain Pike? Why isn't he on the show? <laughs> I, you know, uh, <laughs> this is really put more maybe sh- sharply into focus. Mm-hmm. Not just what I like about last season, but who I like from last season. Yes. And it ain't Ortega. I'll tell you oh, that boy. much. I, and I'll tell you Whoa. what, that is, that's, that might be, cause like I, I didn't love this episode. I probably, mm-hmm. I probably liked it the least of all the strange new worlds episodes we've seen so far. Oh yeah. That's I didn't, for me, I, I didn't, shadow yeah. down. I, I didn't dislike it as much as you did, but I'm not, you know, going to like hurt myself defending it. I didn't think it was awful, but I didn't think it was as good as what we got last year. Um, and it's certainly not the episode I would have, or the kind of story I would have chosen to start the season with. No. Um, no. So we're not, I mean, so we're, 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 there's some distance between us on that, but not like a huge amount of distance, but man with Ortegas, I love Ortegas. Ortegas is one her. of my favorite characters I on the show. Really I love her don't. so much. So here's the thing. She was right on the line last season with her talking back to the captain, with her general talking back in general. Who gives you know a what? shit? Who gives do, a shit? You're not her, you're, you're not her boss. Scarling. You're not her boss. I will tolerate it. If they give us anything as far as well, her character is concerned, other I'll, I'll, than I'll, okay. smart ass that sits at the helm and says things under her breath every time the captain <laughs> says something. I'm I like, love her. I'll, shut your fucking mouth unless you can. What? I'll Go. tell you. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you where, where you may be having a problem with her. Okay. Because this ahead. because I, I know one of the things I really like about her is that she seems to have a very specific rapport with Pike. Maybe. And and that's the and that's something that I would I, I would always sort of reply to because I've but heard even, other people because Pike has told her to shut the fuck up. Well, sometimes, but they also clearly have like a rapport. It's not like he doesn't like her or he's like, I told you about that a thousand times, you know, mm-hmm. like he doesn't, they have a thing, they have a rapport but and it seems dude, like they've served I'm not together be a for friend a while. Of your friend if I don't like your friend, well, just because I like you but, doesn't mean I like but your I friend. Guess, well, <laughs> but the point is, the point is like when people, cause I've heard other people who, who, you know, generally dislike the show, make that, I, cr- I, make like the, the I, I know. I, oh, I know, but I'm saying other people who generally dislike the show, they will use that critique of Ortega's and say, "Oh, she's insubordinate." And I usually go like that because mm. who gives a fuck? It's a made up I, show about made up people. It's, it's not a real not... military. But anyway, but no. But the point is, she and Pike clearly have a rapport. So sure. if Pike is the captain, if Pike's the dude in charge, and he's okay with her being how she is, why does anybody else give a shit? Now I it may have been. <laughs> it may have been. It may, I'll give you this. It may have been interesting to have Spock react to her in a different way, mm-hmm. like because Pike and her have kind of an understanding, and she is the way she is, and Pike is okay with it. But when Spock was in charge, maybe he, especially since Spock is having some emotional troubles and he's trying to kind of hold it together. Sure. Maybe if she was doing her smart Alec thing, Spock could be like, you know. Tone it down, tighten it up. I'm not in the mood for that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that might have been interesting. They didn't go that way. Spock just no. kind of, you know, went along with it like like Pike does. But mm-hmm. so that that may have been a missed opportunity for some characterization, you know, on for both of them, for Ortega's to have to kind of find a, a different way to be when Spock's in charge and to let us see that Spock is, you know, struggling and it doesn't mm-hmm. have the patience or the tolerance. For I this just sort of wish thing. And that they didn't we could that. get something. How about this? How about this? I wish we had more about Ortegas than her doing this for half the episode with some smart ass remark. I want her <laughs> well, to proceed to be a developed character rather than the thing that says the thing. And I guess if it. you are, I guess if, if you are not entertained by her act, then I can see why you would think that I'm entertained by her act. Mm-hmm. I, I was one of the people that 
last year because uh, people who liked Ortegas last year were like, "Where's the Ortegas episode?" And I was like, "Look, yeah, if there's an Ortegas, where is the Ortegas episode?" Well, but but I, and I'm I, I'm given to understand from things that Melissa Navia has said on Twitter that there is going to be a, a more Ortega centered episode this season. But okay. my response was always my response was always, "I mean, look, if they have an Ortegas, if there's if they do an Ortegas episode and it's good, then fantastic. I don't feel like I need one. I feel like I know who she is. I like, don't know anything. I about mean, her I I feel than... like I know who. I mean, I don't." I look, I know I know who she is in the ways that are important to me. I have a sense of her personality. I have a mm -hmm. sense of her her rapport with the different members of the crew. She mm -hmm. had interactions with number one. She had interactions with Uhura. She has interactions with Pike and Spock. Like I feel like I, I get a sense of who she is as she relates to the other characters. I don't necessarily need to know the backstory of everybody on the ship. I don't necessarily need everybody, especially if she's a supporting character who is one of the people on the bridge to be a, like a fully formed three-dimensional person when we've only had 11 episodes of the show. Oh, you know? I hope I mean, it's dark and I, edgy. I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope her backstory is the most boring thing. Like, no, she graduated high school. She, she applied to the Academy. She graduated. She got assigned to the enterprise and that's pretty much been it. And that's pretty much it. She has, both <laughs> of her parents are still alive and they're happy. Both of her she, parents are still she alive. Has, she has a good yeah. relationship with everybody that she knows, yeah. and, you know, um, I did have problems with the episode. Okay. I so, not, not the same I think problems. You that, gathered yeah. what my problems kind of were, yeah. which was, and, uh, and <laughs> it really didn't feel like, uh, you know, a, a, a show called strange new worlds. Was there a strange new world? Yeah. We saw a planet, well, but I mean, it was populated by a bunch of shit that we've already been exposed to before. Yes. Right. And one of the things that I really liked about last season was the sense of exploration. And this fe really felt sure. like, let's not only retread everything, which the down to plots, characters, everything else, mm -hmm. but let's not put any imagination or, or anything into it. We have nothing to say. This is just, hey, you guys like watching your guys run around and cry and punch people. And here's your run around, cry and punch people episode. And I'm like, <laughs> I like that kind of on the tertiary. Right. Why we tell sci-fi stories. I there agree was no sci-fi story here. There really wasn't. There really wasn't. And um, like I said, if it had been me like breaking down the stories of this season, this would not be the kind of episode I would want to start on. I do agree with no. you. Um, uh, most of the problems that you had with it, I share to varying degrees. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't have any, I have zero problem with Ortegas. Whatever. At all. But, but the other things that you've mentioned, I are haven't things written that her off altogether. I just, she really got on my nerves. This, this I know I noticed. <laughs> yeah. but, you know what so, it is? I, there what? was, there was no Pike buffer. Yeah. Pike is only in one scene and then he goes off to do his, his thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do think they took too long to get to the credits. I do think seven or eight <laughs> minutes before the opening credits is way too long. I, it does feel like, they were trying because they, they left a lot of loose ends at the end of last season and which mm -hmm. is fine, but mm -hmm. it felt like they were, they were trying to either wrap up or at least touch on every loose end by the time they got to the opening credits. And I was no. like, okay, you don't need to do that. No, you have 10 episodes. You don't need to do that. Like mm -hmm. if you want this to be the episode where we where we get on back and, f f you know, find out what she's been doing, then just make, just, just do that. Just mm -hmm. make the episode about that, you know, and worry about Spock's time, maybe plant a seed about Spock stuff, you know, let us know that he's dealing with it. But oh, well, they got to you know, deal with all of it and introduce a new character. Yeah, they have to deal with all. It's like they felt like they had to deal with all of it right away. Um, and it just felt like a little a little much. And um, and it's like, oops, we don't have enough room for our main character. So let's just uh, let's, let's just, just let's send him on a field trip. While. Let's send him oh, on a field God. trip. Um and I, I again, I, I mean, I would just I'm just guessing that next episode will be a very Pike heavy episode where we find out what Pike went to do. That's just right. I, I mean, that, that's in the preview for it. Um, we can only I, but I'm just I'm just guessing. Um, I mean, it would make sense, sure. <laughs> you know, uh, so I didn't. So I, I I had a problem with that. I did think the 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 hallway fights with Mbenga and Chapel took way too long, and there were, were boring and there was as way, fucking shit because well, they because they went on too long. 
You know, I mean, there was like, I had a thought, and this is because I just watched the movie because we're reviewing it for late seating this week, but the, you know, the, the legendary fight in They Live between Roddy mm -hmm. Piper and Keith David that goes on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But on purpose, because it's a joke, because it's like, oh, they're still fighting. You thought it was over. They're still fighting. Uh -huh. uh, and <laughs> in this episode, it's like they it kind of had this a similar effect of like where, you know, Mbenga and Chapel would walk into a hallway and there'd be Klingons coming in and they would kick all their asses. And then they'd be like taking mm -hmm. a breath and pulling themselves together and ready to move on to the next thing. And then more Klingons would come in and they would have to fight them again. And oh, then that no. would repeat itself. And it's like, okay, you don't need this. There's too much of this. Like, you don't need this. Maybe have one fight and then get them to where they need to go and then get to them in the room with the space suit and all that where stuff. Where was like, the note? Hey, we need Nurse Chapel and Dr. Mbenga to fight more. <laughs> I need to see more ass kicking from the doctors. I need the how, doctors okay, to be I ass kickers. Him, I need to ask you this question. How many yeah. how many brawls did we have in season one where people were punching each other? Not maybe one. Maybe not, at not, all. not not very many. There was the one. No, well, no, there was the one. There was the episode where the pirates took over the Enterprise. Ugh, yeah. I can't right. remember if there I can't remember if there were. I mean, there was some like physical there were some fighting in that but not like i don't a, not remember like, like not an extended hallway there was, no. fight scene there wasn't like a marvel style you know hand-to-hand -hand combat slow motion action scene mm -hmm. no um and like i said i thought that went on too long i also mm -hmm. I, I i thought it was a an odd choice to introduce Pelia, Carol Kane's character, mm -hmm. and and to introduce her in such a way that it seemed to be setting her up to play some kind of role in the story of this episode. And then yeah, she, she did doesn't. absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah, she did absolutely nothing. And it would seem like there would have been a place for her, like they could have written the story in such a way that she could have done something, you know, to oh. help with the, the Enterprise fighting the other ship or to keep the Enterprise, you know, undetectable to the Klingon. Like there, there, it seems like they could have figured out some thing because all the other characters were pretty even, you know, whether I, I think the, you know, it, it, the story worked on the level it needed to or not, like mm -hmm. every character in the episode had something to do like there you know there were there were roles for everybody and they were all doing stuff Except um for pike. It, uh, pike yeah but they explained pike's <laughs> absence so pike was they explained pike's absence and they explained number one's absence because she's sure. in starfleet jail yeah um but everybody else had a role to play in the story that felt important and meaningful to the plot, except for Carol Kane's character who pops up and is like, Hey, I'm going to be in the show now and let mm -hmm. me come along. And then she comes along and she doesn't do anything. No, well, she, like, she doesn't do a single thing. She's not in the show at all yeah. until, until she is talking well, she to did Spock help them escape. at the end. She helped them escape, but the only, but see, I mean, she helped them escape by not reporting them and by giving them some tips to make their ruse more convincing. Mm -hmm. You know, so she, I mean, as to her, her help in the escape didn't really seem all that important, mm -mm. you know? So it just, it feels like an odd choice to introduce her like that and to bring, and to keep her on the ship and to have yeah. it be like, oh, she's coming along, you know, and she's mm -hmm. on board with stealing the ship. Like she's so on their side. The show, she's like, and, and then the, she doesn't do anything. That's so what, what did the show accomplish this episode? Not it, much. It got Laon back. <laughs> which, and they established, have, which they could and, have done in any number they of could have. compelling ways. And and they established that that number one is still in trouble and that Pike is going somewhere to be to do something. To, to be depicted later to do something in response to Maybe, that. Maybe we and don't it, know. Yeah. I'm sure I, I like I, if I, I don't know, but I would guess that's the next episode. But mm -hmm. I, you know. Um so yeah, not a not a great episode. Not mm. not such a not such a bad episode that it shakes my faith in the show. Like it's not like I watched it and I went, "Oh my god, what has the show become? They've ruined the show." I don't think that. But it is certainly it it is it's not I, I'm not even like I'm not even like disappointed. I'm not like crushed like, "Oh my remember god." Do what I it's kept just, saying it, during yeah. the episode? Do you remember what I kept saying? You I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. No. I hate this. No, what were you saying? What were you saying? What? is this what is happening what is happening <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, I got it as far as the plot is concerned. That's fine. But I didn't get any basic character development out of anybody. It was an right. adventure plot. But once again, we got the Klingons. And the only thing that they managed to do out of this entire episode was introduce White Guinan to the show. And that's it. White Guinan. I do. Oh, speaking of that, that reminds me of something. I like the fact that she's an alien who looks exactly like a human being because that's, that's one of my right. favorite. It's one of my favorite Star Trek tropes. And the more recent shows have gotten away from that because they figure, well, you know, we have the budget now. Let's make them all up as aliens. One mm -hmm. of my favorite Star Trek tropes is when they visit a, and they did this a couple times in TNG as well. Uh, is when they they visit a planet full of aliens mm -hmm. and the aliens look exactly like fucking humans. I love that. That's um, right. And so Carol Kane is apparently a member of a species like not Guinan species, but similar to Guinan species where they live like super, super long. She, I think she she describes it as a basically they live forever. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so. So I like that. Um, I also like the fact it doesn't really it doesn't help the episode all that much because it doesn't have any effect on what we on what we just watched. But. When I think about it in comparison to other shows, especially other shows in the current mm -hmm. generation of the Star Trek franchise, even shows sure. like Discovery, which I mostly like, if like I love the fact and it reminds me of one of the things I like about the show about Strange New Worlds, the Klingon human conspiracy war plot resolved in one episode. If like that would be the plot sure. of an entire season, that would be a plot of an entire season of Discovery, for better and for worse. It'd be like, oh god, this is going to be the whole season. You know, you you the they would like you know Captain Burnham and Saru would discover that there was a plot to start a war between the Federation and some other power, and you'd be like, oh, okay, this is going to be the whole season. I hope this is good because this uh -huh. is going to be the whole season. And with Stranger New Worlds, it's like okay, they wrap it up in one episode. So yep. even though they didn't necessarily put their best foot forward in other ways. One of the things I really loved about the show in the first season was, Hey, it's a one episode story. Everybody, mm -hmm. we're not going to drag this out for 10 episodes. And they did that here. So, you know, bless kinda. their hearts. Kind of. They kind of well, did. Well they, well, they drop like, they did the same thing they did last season. They, they drop in seeds that are going to be ongoing story arcs, but the main plot of this episode is, is resolved. You know, Spock yeah. was drinking with the Klingons. There ain't going to be no war. We're going to be friends That's right. until That's right. until the next war, which will mm -hmm. be after the era of this series. So. Whatever. <laughs> so I wasn't crazy about it, but I I, I liked I it more than you. I wasn't crazy about it either. You did like it more than I did. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It just it didn't feel. I was really hoping for, and I hate to say this, they really they they hit a sweet spot last season, and now we hope we start with this season, and mm -hmm. it's nothing like what we liked from the previous, or at least nothing that I liked from the previous. You know, it's like okay, we're going to take all of this clutter uh, about the characters that was on the tertiary. And that we managed very well during season one. And now it's that's all this episode is, is all the clutter. And also we're mm -hmm. going to add in some shit that the characters didn't need. I felt I got to know Mbenga pretty well with the stuff that happened with his daughter and the entire oh, time sure. that everything, yeah. you know, when the ship had to take over, you know, what was it? They, they became a storybook for a little while. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, okay, that's really neat. And rather than... Take a classic, take a classic Trek, because that's what they did. They took a classic Trek type show and they modernized it. And they made made it their own, right? Yeah. In this one, they basically fabricated a story, and they and I guess they wanted to let everyone know, okay, Klingons are back to normal, everybody. It's okay. That, They're look Klingons at them. again. Look you at can them stop. You, you, you can stop again. complaining. You can you stop can complaining. Stop, please, you fucking please nerds. Stop complaining about them. They're fine. Yeah, um, yeah I, I see what you mean. I, I mean, I, and look, I, we shot our yeah. pew pews, and we got to blow up <laughs> stuff, and there was a fight scene, and, and yeah, and now for whatever reason, somebody's really in love with Nurse Chapel, I guess, mm. and. Oh, yeah. And Pike, the character that you really like, isn't in this episode. <laughs> I missed. Look, I missed Pike, too, but I didn't miss Pike as much as you did. I'm looking forward to having Pike back as, you know, in, you know, as the, the central character of the show. But I thought 
I, you know, that my 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 problems with the episode were not not were not primarily rooted in Pike's absence. I really I'll hope it's not the case that the writers kind of tied up his whole problem with him having a, a destiny that where he winds up in a beep chair, and then they didn't. <laughs> oh, we don't have anything else for him. Let's go back to Spock's problems. I'm like, I don't want any more Spock's problems. I don't mind if Spock's character arc this season is going to be him getting control of his emotions. I'm not necessarily opposed to that. I mean, I I think the idea of doing something a little different with Spock for a season is fine. Like they've already shown that they're they're willing to play with Spock and to let their version of Spock, they're, they're not locked in. And you have to be exactly like Leonard Nimoy, Ethan. You have to be exactly like Leonard Nimoy. <sighs> like they, they haven't done that, which I, which I think is a good, you know, uh, a good choice. If you're going to mm-hmm. make your show, make your show. You know, don't yeah. try to make somebody else's show. And, um, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't have a problem. Now, how, whether or not it turns out good is different. We haven't seen the episodes. <laughs> but the, I, the idea of let's have, the, let's have Spock's, you know, ongoing story this season be him and his emotions. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have a problem with that necessarily. We'll see how it turns out. One more thing. I do want to mention one more thing. Okay. Um, and it's another, it's another problem I had with the episode. It's a minor okay. one. It's a minor mm. one, but it's some, It's one that would have been easily fixed, and I wish that they had fixed it. And that is the little bit, the little exchange between Spock and Uhura and Ortegas about what Spock's catchphrase is going to be when he orders them to go to warp. Yeah. I know it was in the trailer. Mm. I know people were expecting to see it. Mm-hmm. But there is a, an almost identical beat in the last episode of Picard with Seven mm-hmm. of Nine. Yes, there is. So- so for this episode of Strange New Worlds, since it comes out after that, I would have got rid of that completely. Yeah. I would have just cut that his, out. I would have changed it to Spock saying, just do what I fucking say. <laughs> just do what Ortega, I tell you. Ortega in the name of fucking Christ. Actually, there's a damn order <laughs> there's, and you're not doing it. There's the editor in me sees they could have just they could have completely cut it out because yes. Because Spock says, you know, set course for whatever the planet is, warp, whatever. They could have just cut from Spock doing that to Ortega's turning back around and looking at the screen and hitting the button. And that would have been fine. I think they would have they could have gotten that. And that's just from the takes we see in the episode. They may have had alternate takes they could have cut to to bridge that gap. But I would have I I would have cut that out completely, Um, not just because it's the exact same beat as we got in the most recent episode of the most of the of the most recent previous show mm-hmm. but also but also because i fucking hate that i what? hate the whole i i hate that they're making a conscious thing out of every captain has a thing that they say like okay first of all no, we watch the show they had a thing we, that they would say because it was part of their character well, well that's the thing yeah I don't. Now it's I don't a fucking like, class at Starfleet. Yeah, I don't before, like other characters. <laughs> I don't like other characters commenting on it and saying everybody has a thing. Like, no, please don't. Don't. It's. It was bad enough when they did it and when they when they when they brought it out and had them talk about it in Picard and like Captain Seven. Like, oh, well, what's your thing going to be? Please don't. Let's just you know let if 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 Spock has a thing that he says, let him just say it yeah. and and let us get it. You what know, was they Kirk's? Did a, yeah. What was Kirk's, Steve? What was Kirk? Kirk didn't have one. Kirk didn't That's have right, one. That's right, buddy boy. He didn't have Kirk one. Kirk didn't have one. And and he and this is the thing. Nobody gave a shit until people noticed, hey, Picard says the same two or three things all the time. Because even Picard didn't have one. Picard no. had he would say, make it so, you know. Yeah. He would say engage, which is like yeah. engage isn't is barely a catchphrase. That's right. like it sounds like technical language. It's like telling the transporter guy to energize. It's like other people could say <laughs> engage, and it's not like you're stealing Picard's thing. No, that's just what you say. But in you this know? one, we got to have Ortega's cross her arms and refuse yeah. to carry out the order that he obviously the other, just gave her. The other thing is, the other thing is, and again, I have no problem with Ortega's, but my problem is, in addition to all everything I just said, that it repeats something we just saw on another show, and it's mm-hmm. like a, just a thing that I think is a bad idea to make that like a conscious thing where people are talking about it because it's dumb nerd shit, and real people in that world wouldn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. But also, it. It 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 uh, slows the plot down. Aren't you guys pl- sailing a ship right now? Yeah, exactly. That's the point where Spock is like they've gotten free from the star base and Starfleet doesn't know that it's a fake emergency yet. So now they have to turn the ship around and fly away before Starfleet figures out what's going on. And <sighs> so it's like, all right, let's go. And instead of going, 
they have to stop everything for two minutes while they talk about what Ortega Spock's catchphrase is. Turn gonna around be. And, and grill him about what's your thing. Well, be? they had they, they had Uhura doing it too. It's not just Ortega's. I don't give a shit and, who does it. I'm tired of all and, of them doing it. <laughs> well, I just I'm just saying that I think they should have completely. They should have, and it it's it's maybe 90 seconds of the episode, but still, it's like and it's 90 seconds when they should be getting on their way and they stop for this thing that we've seen before in other shows that isn't that great, you know, and they, they should have just completely cut it out. And if mm. somebody would have complained, well, but in this trailer, we saw Spock say, I want the ship to go. Then they should have said, Hey, shut the fuck up. You fucking nerd. Shut your fucking mouth. I God, I would love it if Akiva Goldsmith or Alex Kurtzman would just like fucking spin around on a Trekkie when they get asked some dumb, oh. unserious fucking question. Like, Hey, shut the fuck up. And then half of them are doing it too. It doesn't matter. It's I know, but I would just these are my dreams. little weasels trying to. These are my to dreams. It's my one. my dream. My dream for a Star Trek showrunner to actually stand up to the fans and be like, "Shut the fuck up and watch the fucking show that we spent millions of dollars making for you, you motherfucker." Anyway, nope. nope. Shatner tried that so, yeah. once on a Sh- sketch. Oh, yeah. Shatner did it in a sketch. Live. He, he wasn't. He didn't even really years. say it. Years, no. <laughs> he didn't even really say it. He said it in a sketch, and the nerds were like, "I can't believe it! How dare he?" Calm the mm-hmm. fuck down, you fucking nerds. He paid. Oh for no, the guy who pl- the time. guy who played Captain Kirk pretended to tell us to get a life. <laughs> we'll never mm-hmm. recover from this. <laughs> well, if no, you no, only knew a- how much he hates you for real. Um. Anyway. <laughs> All right. That's it. Goodbye, everybody. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was. Let's pray not to great. God that Jason the next, thought it was next episode. I did not enjoy myself. I don't think it was awful. The worst thing I'd ever I'd seen no, in a long you. time. But after I went to the hospital for heart failure, I was expecting a little <laughs> bit more Star Trek. <laughs> And you couldn't even do that, could you? You bunch <laughs> you <need> of to- <laughs> ball washing bastards. You need to write them. You need to write them. I've recently been going through a medical crisis, and I was looking forward to Strange New Worlds, and this episode was not what I wanted. Also, you by have the jeopard- way, you have jeopardized guys, my health. <laughs> they cut to a scene where they called up to the Enterprise to have someone have them beam them up, and they and they had yet another very I, I called them the androgynous woman. That crew, the transporter <laughs> chief, yeah, the yeah. transporter chief, and yeah. I was like, guys, you're developing a rep. I, in my head, you're developing a reputation now that everyone that works on on board the Enterprise is an androgynous, short haired woman. Don't get me wrong, I find that very attractive, but it's but you like a little variety. But it starts feeling like a joke if every time you call up to the oh, Enterprise, yeah. it's a it's a short haired woman. You know, the thing that I noticed was I think the this character's name they they called him or her them Jay. they called them uh Jay, Jay. Ensign Jay or Chief Jay or whatever. Yeah. And they look a lot like Kyle from last season. Like they it's a similar they 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 have a Really? Yeah. Okay. Cuz Kyle from last season was the same kind of like very sort of slight of build and kind of short and mm-hmm. you know and it's mm-hmm. like cuz for a second I thought they had just recast Kyle. Okay. You know. But but he called him oh. a different name. So yeah yeah that sure. if if I had a, if if I noticed anything about it it was like oh they 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 picked a new character and they picked an actor that looks just like the I thought maybe they got Kyle confused the and they season. thought that they were that this was uh, Ensign Junior Grade J from and from from Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yeah, but we know that can't be the truth. No, because she's pregnant with Steve's baby. She's pregnant with Ensign Johnson's or Lieutenant Johnson's baby. Yeah, that's right. Because that's not a plug for our show, is it? No, no. Which we're recording tomorrow. That's right. Anyway, um, yes. I I did not I did not enjoy myself. It's not the worst thing ever. Don't get me wrong, but I was hoping for more. Yes. And Steve would didn't like it. You did like it. You didn't like I, it. I did. I didn't. I but not I didn't. as much as I did. You didn't I, like, like, I, like it as it. much as. Like I said, if we're rating, if we're ranking the all of the episodes of the show so far, this one's on the bottom right now. Sure. Um, I didn't think it was like awful. No. And I, 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 and I, like I said, I'm not like worried or disappointed or upset or anything, but mm. it is not the, it's not the kind of episode that I was looking forward to having the season start. And it did like, it had the problems that I've discussed already, the structure problems and the writing yeah. problems. Mm. Um, so, you know, and the no it is what it problems. is. And the no pike problem, which will hopefully be rectified next week. 
We'll see. It'll be a pikeorama. It'll be a pike um, extravaganza. A pike fest. A big old a pike, pike sandwich. Two two slices of pike between two loaves of yeah. pike. Yeah. I want to see. Squish. I want to see it. Pike holding a pike as he walks down a pike. I want to be dripping with Pike at the end of the <laughs> step. <laughs> yes. But I will say this. Don't do it again. Don't you ever say, hey, Stranger Worlds episode is up and there's no Pike in it. As far as I'm concerned, no, I don't care. <laughs> don't, that's you talking to Paramount. That's don't me. you ever do that again. Don't, don't, ever don't you do ever do that again. I want Pike in this motherfucker, okay? <laughs> I want Pike making food for his crew. He's the only <laughs> one we watch. At least a subplot. No more of this one scene and then gone. At least a subplot in every episode. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm. So we'll see you next week, everybody, for episode two. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.